evening, you're watching 7 at 7. I'm Preeti Chaudhary. It's the show we curate the day's top seven stories for our viewers. Just going to begin with Numerically, where India stands with its fight against COVID-19 viewers. This is what it looks like. Share numbers where we stand. Our total active cases right now are at 5,37,302. Our COVID deaths till now are recorded at 1,40,573, while COVID recovery is still dated. And that's the worm graph which shows it going up to 91,39,901. So this is what it looks like numerically where India stands with its fight against COVID-19. Let me. All right, let's take you through what's the very latest. Our top story is the farm protest and viewers, the Bharat Bank call which has been given for tomorrow, the 8th of December. Even one day before the government sits down on the table once again to talk to farmers. Farmers are hoping the nationwide bank call on Tuesday will widen their protest from the epicenter Delhi to the rest of the country. The unions have specified bank will be observed from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. During the bank, shops and businesses will remain shut. There will be no supply of vegetables and milk. Farmer unions have clarified that emergency services will be exempt. This is what it looks like with the call for Bharat Bank. Farmers agitation against the three farm laws that allow a free hand for private players is reaching a peak. Farmers are hoping the nationwide bund called on Tuesday will widen their protests from epicenter Delhi to the rest of the country. <laughs> The unions have specified bunds and will be observed from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. During the bund, shops and businesses will remain shut. There will be no supply of vegetables and milk. The farmer unions have clarified that emerging services, services will, will be exempted during the band and the agitation will be non-violent. The protesters have appealed people from other sectors to extend their support. Some have agreed. Transport Association, Truck Union, Tempo Union, Savi ne milkar ke is band ko kamjab safal banane ka faisla kiya hai. Taxi Union wale bhi saath mein aa gaye hain. Bus wale bhi kahi jaga saath aa rahe hain. To ye political partiyan BJP nu chhod kar ke kisanon ke diye hue program baat band ka support kar rahi hain. Ahead of the Bharat Band, the Home Ministry has issued advisories to states saying law and order should be maintained and destruction of public property must be prevented. The MHA has urged states to ensure COVID protocols are followed, while states like Kerala and Bengal are likely to observe complete shutdown. The participation of many trade unions could affect life in other parts of the country as well. In the tug of war between farmers and government, the Bharat Band could be a crucial turning point. Will the whole agitation remain apolitical as it is going on now? Or will it take a political turn in days to come? With camera person Himanshu Sharma, it's Kumar Kunal for India Today from Delhi. All right, my colleague Abhishek Anand joins us from the farmer agitation at the Ghazipur border. Abhishek, what's the sense that you're picking up from the farmers that you're talking to? Number one, for what has been till now an apolitical uh, protest, agitation. They have welcomed the political support they've got for the Bharat Band. There's also now a call being given out that no force be used to 
make the bump a success? Give us more details. Well, Preeti, uh, this uh, Ghazipur border is comparatively calmer than the Singhu border. As you can see, there are fewer farmers. The Bharatiya Kisan Union farmers are here and they are all saying that more farmers from parts of UP and Madhya Pradesh will join them to make the Bharat Band successful. But here are two more, uh, important uh, things which have come up in last uh, few hours. Number one, Preeti, is that uh, some major associations, uh, market associations of Delhi have said that they are not going to shut their shops tomorrow. The Confederation of All India Traders Association and the Connaught Place Market Associations have clearly said that they are not going to support the Bund and they will, uh, uh, the shops will remain open and the business will be as usual tomorrow. Number two is that Section 144 has already been imposed in parts of UP apart from the advisory of the MHA. The government, the state government of Uttar Pradesh and Delhi are preparing for the Bharat Band to prevent any kind or any kind of violence. The Bharat Band will be a turning point in this uh, agitation as uh, the agitation is largely on the uh, border, uh, on the Singhu border uh, that connects Punjab and Haryana and rest of the northern parts of India. But at the UP border there are lesser number of farmers and the roads the adjacent roads are also open for a free uh, uh, travel for the commuters as you can see uh, there are fewer police personnel also here so this uh, this will be a turning point Preeti tomorrow's band the might of farmers protest they are trying to show people that uh, all these uh, uh, all, all the communities they are getting support from all the communities but Tomorrow will be the litmus test of this agitation. Also, they are saying that they are welcoming all the opposition parties, but without their flags, without the name of their leaders and without the party flags, they are welcoming the opposition leaders to join the Bharat Path. Priti. All right, appreciate you joining us. We're going to continue to come back to you, uh, Abhishek. Uh, but let's just, meanwhile, shift focus to the other big story that we're tracking very closely, and that story emanates from the state of West Bengal, Shiliguri. Well, Shiliguri today was the theater of violence, primarily so, because once again, there was a clash between BJP workers and the West Bengal police. Now, this was as per the BJP worker that had died during the protest. The Saffron Party had organized a march to protest against what it calls lawlessness in the state. But the march turned into chaos with stone pelting and the cops using water cannon and tear gas shells. Senior BJP leader Kailash Vijaywargya, Dilip Ghosh and Tejasvi Surya were leading the march. আমি হসপিটালে অন্তত পক্ষে 15 জন কর্মীর সঙ্গে দেখা করলাম যারা করোনা কোনো আহত হয়েছে একটা মজার ব্যাপার দেখলাম বেশিরভাগই বুকে গুলি লেগেছে ছোট ছোট ছিটা যে বন্দুক দিয়ে পাখি মারা হয় সেখান থেকে এরকম ছিটা বের হয় কিন্তু পুলিশের হাতে এরকম ছিটা কি করে এলো বা পুলিশ কে এরকম ব্যবহার করতে আমরা দেখিনি গায়ে জায়গা জায়গা যে মারা গেছে পোলেন রায় গজল ডবার আমাদের কর্মী জলপাইগুড়ির তার বুকে শরীরে একাধিক জায়গায় এরকম ছিটা লেগেছে প্রচুর রক্ত ছড়েছে आज भारतीय जनता युवा मोर्चे पश्चिम बंगाल की शाखा ने उत्तर बंगाल में भाई तेजस्वी और सुमित्र खान के नेतृत्व में शांतिपूर्ण प्रदर्शन किया प्रजातांत्रिक तरीके से प्रदर्शन किया किंतु ममता जी की सरकार ने जिस प्रकार अराजकता और गुंडागिर्दी देखी गई निश्चित रूप से प्रजातंत्र की हत्या है एक शांतिपूर्ण जुलूस जिसमें महिला कार्यकर्ता भी हो उनके ऊपर लाठीचार्ज करना उनके ऊपर आंसू गोस के गोले फेंकना उनके ऊपर टी के गुंडों ने बम फेंके और इस प्रकार अराजकता फैलाई पुलिस का पथराव करते हुए बम फेंकते हुए फोटो हमारे पास है वीडियो हमारे पास है उधर बहुत सारे पुलिस लोग पुलिस लोग पत्थर मार रहे हैं और उनके साथ जो टीएमसी के गुंडे हैं वो भी मिलकर कंट्री बम फेंक रहे हैं ये लोकतंत्र की डे लाइट में मर्डर हो रही है इसको हम सब मिलकर बचाना है यही युवा मोर्चा के संकल्प है Let's cut across to my colleague Indrojit Kundu, who's joining us for the very latest. Indro, what does it look like right now in Siliguri? Have things calmed down? Well, that's right, PT. Things uh, have uh, calmed down a bit. Uh, however, the Bharatiya Janata Party has now called for a 12 hour North Bengal ban, not just Siliguri, uh, not just the district of the Darjeeling, but entire North Bengal, which means uh, Jalpaiguri, Alipur Duar, Darjeeling district, as well as Malda. So that has been called for a shutdown tomorrow, and it comes on a day 
when there are several farmers' bodies which have called for a nationwide farmers' strike. So uh, the BJP upping the ante across the state in various locations. The BJP has also protested just a short while back, even in Kolkata outside the BJP party office. Party workers protested and uh, burned the effigy of Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee. The BJP clearly claims that this person, the BJP worker who died today, is due to police atrocity. They also met the Governor Jagdeep Dhankar just a short while back, and a deputation was submitted to him uh, alleging police atrocity during today's agitation. We appreciate you joining us, Indra. We're going to continue to come back to you for further updates on that story. Meanwhile, let's shift focus right now to Tamil Nadu. Well, Rajnikanth has finally thrown his hat in the ring where politics is concerned. He's going to fight on every seat in the elections of Tamil Nadu next year. But what's happened is one of his closest aides has pretty much said that uh, Rajnikanth will not align when it comes down to Dravidian parties. What does that actually mean? Rajni's aide, Tamil Ruvi Manian, has said that the superstar assured him he would never join hands with the DMK or the AI DMK. According to Manian, he's requested Rajni to never ally with these Dravidian parties. Rajni replied that he would never commit such a mistake. The superstar, meanwhile, is focusing on firming up his political front. He reached Bengaluru last night and met his brother. Rajni took his elder brother Satya Narayana's blessing for his journey in politics and will be in Bengaluru for the week. Secular and uh, spiritual will definitely go hand in hand, no doubt in it. It is going to be happened. It would be the real achievement of Rajini Gant. You are just uh, going to see that. On October 29th, this is the same man who said that I cannot, uh, you know, be active because of my illness and whatnot. Uh, and on November 30, he nearly, have, you know, without uh, telling much, he again has uh, stuck to the same position. Now, in those three days or four days' time, what has happened? I think that is something that we need to inquire. I don't think uh, the I, I don't really think that he wants to come into politics. But then there is still a force which is pushing him and prodding him uh, to come into politics. Again, he says that he doesn't have any enemies and whatnot. In politics, obviously, at an ideological plane, you will definitely have people on opposite camps. Now, he doesn't want to hurt anybody. Now, that doesn't work either. All right, let's cut focus now to the state of Andhra Pradesh. BJP has a new entrant, a new joinee, an actor who's been active in politics earlier. Well, this is the story coming in from the state of Andhra Pradesh. Actor turned politician Vijay Shanti joined the BJP after quitting the Congress. She will be meeting BJP President JP Nadda. She already met the Home Minister on Sunday. The South star is known for her roles in movies like Surya IPS, Kolimi, Zamanat, Rowdy Inspector. Vijay Shanti started her political career in 97 when she joined the BJP but only to quit and join the TRS and then to the Congress in 2014 and now switching back to the BJP in 2020. It's quite a bit of a turnover. All right, the Hunter vaccine is a permanent fixture right here on 7 at 7. The latest is uh, that after Pfizer, Serum Institute has now sought emergency use authorization for Covishield in India. The company is currently conducting phase three clinical trials of the Oxford COVID-19 vaccine Covishield co-sponsored by the Indian Council of Medical Research. Citing the SII application, official sources said the firm has stated that data from four clinical studies show that Covishield is highly efficacious against symptomatic and most importantly against severe COVID-19 infections. The Serum Institute is the first indigenous company to apply to the DCGI seeking emergency use authority. Now, the Indian arm of US pharmaceutical giant Pfizer became the first to seek a similar approval from the drug regulator for its own COVID-19 vaccine in the country. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through what it looks like in terms of comparison of all vaccines that would be available in the market uh, and when they are available, what's the comparison points between them. Let's take you through some of those comparisons. Well, if you talk about the Pfizer vaccine type RNA, the efficacy is 95%. However, this vaccine needs to be stored. Uh, needs to be stored at uh, a temperature of minus 70 degrees Celsius. Let's take you right now to the other vaccine, the Moderna vaccine. Type RNA, the efficacy is 94.5%, but it can sustain on temperatures of just minus 20. So that's in terms of storage is better than Pfizer. Sputnik V, the Russian vaccine, 
type viral vector efficacy is 95 percent storage is 2 to 8 degrees celsius so it is uh, stable at even higher temperatures than moderna and pfizer let's take you now to the oxford vaccine the oxford vaccine type viral vector efficacy 70.4 percent storage 2 to 8 degree celsius which is as good as sputnik v if you're actually looking at the efficacy of it all if you speak to most scientists they suggest an efficacy of 70 and above is good enough well some of them are offering 90 percent like pfizer 95 percent like pfizer and oxford at 70.4 percent we're going to keep a keen eye on all developments there where the vaccines are concerned let's now shift focus to the other big story that we're tracking every day right here on India today on this bulletin which is the AQI index of the national capital and how it's deteriorating the way it is let's take you now to the latest figures that are coming in on that Delhi today recorded an AQI of 444 with smog engulfing parts of the national capital and reducing visibility this is the very poor category for the fifth consecutive day Air quality index around the Delhi University, Lodi Road, Mathura Road, IIT Delhi, Indira Gandhi International Airport was the worst. Ghaziabad, Gurugram registered air quality in the hazardous category with AQI over 450. Welcome back. You're watching our fact check segment where we bust certain claims masquerading to be facts on social media platforms and whatsapp groups now there is a picture you might have seen it on your whatsapp groups which might have suggested flags that are being waved flags of the Bharatiya Janta Party being waved in Pakistan occupied Kashmir false the fact check on that this picture in terms of the content of it is doctored these flags viewers were in fact waved in Kishtwar in Jammu and Kashmir in connection of the very latest elections of the DDC elections which have taken place in Jammu and Kashmir nothing to do with Pakistan occupied Kashmir all right viewers with that quick fact check it's a wrap on this edition of uh, 7 at 7 but do stay tuned up next is to the point where we're going to put the focus on the politics that is peaking around the farm of agitation stay with us Hi everyone, Preeti Chaudhary here. Hope you like this video. For latest news and analysis, like and subscribe to the India Today YouTube channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated. Thank you for watching.